All right, guys, we're gonna hook this up today. We're gonna hook the poly braid hose up to the fitting on the IBC tote. Uh, you've seen me do it before, and uh, seen Joe Deary do it, I'm sure, because that's where I found it from. So you get a hose and a barb, and yeah, I could try to force that on there, but you take a chance of breaking that barb off. I mean, it, I could wiggle it and get it on there probably, but that's not necessary. Get you some water, hot water, put that down in there for a few minutes, get it to where it's a little warm. Slides right on. It doesn't get any easier than that. All I gotta do now is go put the clamp on and I'm good to go. So, huge tip. You'll see a lot of crap on YouTube. Uh, some's good, some's bad, but that is definitely a good one that I learned. Great tip, especially for this poly braid hose. All right, so what I'm wanting to do here is I just want to do a flow test. In my mind, and I could be 100% totally wrong, but if I'm pulling up to a customer's house and I run a water hose over here to this pressure washer, I run a water hose to that, it's getting four to five gallons a minute. If I crack the valve on this tote and I'm getting four to five gallons a minute, what, how's that pressure washer know if it's coming from a tote or if it's coming from the hose until that runs down a little bit and uh, you know it's empty, which in that case you just don't let it run down that low. So I'm gonna do a test today and just see what kind of water flow I get out of it. All right guys, so what I'm wanting to do here is have a flow test and basically just see is there a difference between coming out of the tote or the water faucet. I'm sure some places have better pressure, but my machine runs four gallons a minute. Uh, and so you basically need at least four gallons a minute coming out of the spigot. So I got a five gallon bucket here. In my mind, it's probably gonna hold, probably gonna take a full minute to fill up. So what I'm gonna do is crack that valve or open the valve up and see if I can get at least five gallons in a minute and see what that looks like. Because to me, what would be the difference in that pressure washer knowing it's getting it from the tote or if it's getting it from a water hose. As long as it's full, it has the pressure coming down, uh, I think that it'll probably get about five gallons a minute, uh, and that should be sufficient to run the machine without it having to pull or suck, you know, anything. It should be pretty sufficient. So uh, what I'm gonna do is, I got that right there, I'm gonna crack this. All right, it cracked, and I started my timer. All right. So I basically just want to get a flow on this. I want to see how much is coming out through this hose. That is three-quarter hose. I went with, I think, the biggest I could, um, just so I could get the most flow out of it. So we're about halfway through, two and a half gallons at 26 seconds. So my thing is I want to see how long it takes this. I think if I can get at least five gallons in a minute that I should be sufficient, even if I wanted to leave that tote there and leave my pressure washer where it is. All right. We're about to fill up here at 48, 49, 50, 54, it's running over. Okay. So that means running it from there with all them swirly, I'm sure that probably doesn't hurt, uh, help the flow, but running it from there to there, I got five minute, five gallons a minute, and that's gonna be a continuous flow of water. It's, there's nothing gonna be stopping that. So I got five gallons a minute of water and it took 55 seconds. So I would have probably got just say five and a half. So that's what I was wanting to do is just a flow test this. 
I still may just leave it down. My thing is, why can't I just hook it up from here to here if I'm getting the same flow? Maybe if I was to, you know, they say the gravity feed that you gotta have, you gotta have it, your pressure washer below the tank. So that means to me, like if I was to take and crack that valve and then held it up like this, I wouldn't get that same flow. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm just trying to make sense of, I hear pressure washer guys say that you can't gravity feed a four gallon, but then you get online and you see these guys gravity feeding pressure washers uh, for mobile detailing and they got electric two and a half gallons. They got a little bit of everything on there and they have no issues. So uh, yeah, heck I'll just try that. Let's see. If I was to crack this open and I got that same flow, all right, if you pull up, you don't get that flow. So that would make sense on it needing to be down at least, at least down that way. Now, if you guys seen earlier in the video, one way I could have done this easily is if I would have just put a half inch hose instead of a three quarter and ran it over here to my pump and then I could have pumped it straight into the machine and I would have known that I was getting at least five and a half gallons a minute and all I'd have done is flip the switch. When I'd stay off the trigger, the pump would have cut off. When I got back on the trigger, it would have started pushing water again and I wouldn't have had any issues. The thing with this is I got to use some chemicals. I got to, I got to take a hot mix with me and uh, use it for a while. And so I didn't want to take a chance on running any kind of bleach or anything through the pump and screwing the pump up. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Uh, but I'm gonna get that pressure washer down. I'm gonna set it down here, hook it up, and see what we got going. braid coming in over here gravity feeding to this triple a four gallon a minute machine now i thought when i primed it that well i honestly i thought by priming it would just be running the water through it and then just pulling the trigger like you would be if you was getting the air out of the line on a, a house but just pulling the trigger i wasn't getting nothing uh fire the machine up there was like one little bitty air bubble that came through and I pulled the trigger and I had pressure just like I would on a regular house. So now I'm just gonna pull the trigger and see without the pump running, now that it has water in it, if I still have some sort of flow. And I have nothing. So it seems to me that the, I got a little drizzle. It seems that doing it this way, the only way that the only way that that's going to work is when the machine is on and it is pulling the water through. And then when it isn't on, uh, it, still, it just doesn't have any flow. I don't know if that would be... Uh, I know the water isn't just stopping at the pump because the second I have pressure, it's coming through. Definitely a job I'm not going to try to stay off the trigger that long to uh, when I do this. Like I said, I'm just experimenting. If I had a, a different machine, different pump, I know it wouldn't be as difficult as I guess I'm making it. But I'm just trying to uh, do it minimum, minimally and uh, just do it to where I don't do any damage to the machine and uh, just be able to get by with not having any water at the job. 
So the whole time we've been talking, I've been holding this trigger in. You know, if you have water coming from a water place uh, or a water hose, you hold the trigger in, you're gonna have a little drizzle. I have nothing, so it almost seems like it's either staying in the pump or it's staying right at the pump. So, uh, and it may just be that between the hose I have, you know, it's just not pulling through without the pressure, without the pump running to pull through the 200 foot of hose. But the second that I turn it back on and the water's there and I have pressure again. So I'm gonna play around with it for a little bit and uh, see how that works.